Ladies and gentlemen, Unreal Engine 5 is going to change the gaming industry, not just because what it means for graphics, but also game development and the metaverse. Let's discuss that, shall we? But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is all you need to build your website and help make it a success. Their all-in-one platform has everything from website design to marketing tools, as well as analytics. Squarespace is the place to make your dream website a reality. My hell time flies. It was around a year ago that we first saw Unreal Engine 5 debut with the Lumen demo, and it looked incredibly enticing. It really showed off two technologies from Unreal Engine 5. The first was Nanite and the second being Lumen. But now Epic have gone ahead and released not only Unreal Engine 5 to public beta so that you can quite literally download and start playing around with the engine, but have also detailed a lot more information on exactly what this engine is going to bring to the fray. Now, quite honestly, there's a ton of stuff to get through here, but I did want to go through some of the highlights. There'll also be another video in the next couple of weeks or so when the dust settles and I've actually had more time to play around with the engine myself. But yeah, there is so much to go through. So let's start out with some of the highlights. The first is Nanite. I have done a very deep dive on both Nanite as well as Lumen in a previous video, so I'll link that in the video description because really not a whole lot has changed here, but basically Nanite is a virtualized micro polygon geometry system. This allows you to import assets directly from something like ZBrush where you don't have to worry about creating lower you know, quality asset version of that. So typically, if you're a game engine designer, something like that, then you would create, let's say you're creating a car, you would create multiple iterations of that car, depending on, you know, distances from the camera and so on. And then the engine basically can kind of pull in different LODs. It's a whole thing. But TLDR, you don't need to worry about that anymore with uh, Nanite. Basically, you just import the ultra high quality polygon detail version, and then the engine will seamlessly transition the quality as you want. In fact, they essentially said that now, um, yeah, mesh LODs are completely and utterly replaced. All assets are virtualized. And in this specific scene, you can see the different colored regions represent different instances. In other words, think of instances to simplify as basically different assets. It's not quite that simple, but just for the sake of this video, say it is. And um, yeah, I mean, according to their own information uh, within the scene, you're getting one to two million triangles for these objects. Now that is crazy. Think of it this way. That triangle count, that polygon count, absolutely demolishes what, let's say, the PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 could do in an entire scene. Of course, what a you know maximum triangle slash uh, polygon count of a system is does depend on the scene, how complex it is, lighting, and tons of other details. But, you know, TLDR is that the level of detail in, let's say, one of these rock formations is just, it's mind-blowing. It really is. We also have TSA, or Temporal Super Resolution. And this is, again, a new piece of technology, which you can think of as an AA solution, anti-aliasing solution for Unreal Engine 5. This had not actually been shown off by Epic before. And Epic um, have certainly had very interesting AA kind of solutions within that engine previously. But this one, again, is new for Unreal Engine 5. So basically this, um, according to Epic anyway, allows almost 4K visual quality, but only at the cost of 1080p. But this tech is really confusing a lot of people. And basically AMD themselves in their own blog post, that is AMD's blog post, they've said that this technology is something that they helped you know, Epic optimize for Radeon hardware. And so what's basically happening is that people are conflating this with AMD's FSR technology. Now FSR, or Fidelity FX Super Resolution, is AMD's tech which allows you to upsample from lower resolution images to higher resolution, basically a bit like NVIDIA's DLSS. However, to my understanding, this technology and FSR are not the same thing. But to my understanding, um, speaking to a couple of games developers, AMD did work with Epic specifically to optimize this technology for Radeon hardware. 
especially RDNA 2, which of course is very important for the next generation consoles, as well as the RX 6000. But this technology will still work on, let's say, a GeForce. So if you have an RTX 30 card, I assume NVIDIA have worked with um, Epic to optimize it for that as well. So again, to my understanding, this is not the same technology which AMD will be debuting you know, later on. Um, I'm hearing it's gonna be next month. So this is uh, Epic's own solution. If you're a developer, you can download Unreal Engine 5 and start messing around with it. If you're targeting the PC platform and want to run Nanite, you will need a Maxwell or later card on the NVIDIA side or a GCN-based AMD card. They don't specify the version of GCN. Meanwhile, if you want to target consoles, either the Xbox Series S or X, which makes sense given they've got the, essentially the same GPU architecture, or Sony's PlayStation 5. Now we've seen the PS5 already show off a demo of Unreal Engine last year, which was looming in the land of the Nanite. And according to Epic, it was running at 1400p, which was temporarily uh, upsampled to 4K. We'll get more into that in just a second. But very important thing here is that when you're using uh, nanite it's almost all being run on the gpu there's essentially no cpu cost and further to this uh, they state that nanite is very good for games which are targeting higher frame rates for example 60 fps or above on console under the release notes of um, unreal engine 5 there's also a little bit of additional information about temporal super resolution so we can see here a comparison shot, which not only gives you an idea of the image quality between the native 4K image and uh, the 1080p TSR, well, you can also see the frame rate difference, and it's pretty damn stark, as you can see. 20 FPS versus 44. Further to this, while the official blog post from AMD does state that they helped uh, Epic optimize for the RDNA architecture, it does still run on any shader model 5 GPU. So of course this will mean a modern GeForce card as well. Further to this, it will support a wide range of APIs. Naturally DirectX is one of those as along with Vulkan and of course Sony and Microsoft's own APIs. Adding even more is that because the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X will be in full swing by the time UE5 is being fully utilized by developers, which is going to be in a couple of years' time. So essentially at that point, you know, the consoles will be very well established. Epic have also heavily optimized the shaders for the next generation consoles. Now I'm about to give a hefty dose of speculation, but I imagine this will mean that AMD, along with both Sony and Microsoft, would have been heavily involved in the optimization process. We'll get back to Unreal Engine in just a moment, but first, just a quick message from our sponsor, Squarespace. Designing your dream website doesn't have to be complicated. With a huge range of fully customizable templates and themes to choose from, Squarespace's versatile tools make it easy to create your dream website. Simply select your starting theme template from a large library of themes, all designed from different categories of website. From here, you can make your website truly your own and customize it as much or as little as you like. Their platform is more than a design tool, however, with expert advice on hand if you need it, as well as tools for SEO, social media integration, and email campaigns. So whether you're creating a new website from scratch, selling art, just building a portfolio for your resume, Squarespace is everything you need to get your name out there. Plus, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with the code REDGAMINGTECH. Just use the link in the description. And next up, we have Lumen. While Nanite is extremely important for geometry, when it comes to creating a scene and the atmosphere, lighting has, well, a massive role. Basically, the position of the sun, the reflections in a scene, and so on and so on. It helps you easily be able to convey a sense of you know depth to the scene. It, honestly, just being able to see how light reflects from a specific uh, object it gives you a kind of a sense of how that object fits into the grand scheme of things, the world, without even kind of being able to understand what the material is of that object. And this is where, again, Lumen comes in. So according to um, Epic, and again, I've gone much more extensively into this, uh, in a previous video, which again, I will link in the description. It's a fully dynamic global illumination as well as reflection system. And it is designed around next generation hardware, especially consoles. 
Just like Nanite, it's, as I mentioned, a huge subject, but the TLDR is this allows you to do advanced, say, bounce lighting. This is even things such as color bleeding. So, for example, let's say you have an orange vase against a white background and a white table and, you know, a neutral light, let's say a white light, and obviously color bleeding would be something like how the bounces of light would start to affect the surrounding area. So just having this increases the sense of realism massively. And the thing, again, about this technology that Epic have introduced here is that it's extremely dynamic as you are crafting the world. And for example, you can just very easily import assets, either from the own bridge or your own assets that you've created. Again, something like ZBrush. And it's, it's very seamless. And the reason that this is um, very important, and Epic kind of made a really big deal about how easy it is to iterate scenes. So, you know, if you're uh, working on a large AAA project, you're not going to be working on this on your, you know, by yourself. You're going to have multiple artists who are creating certain assets for certain areas. And so, of course, you're going to consistently see different versions of uh, the, the level consistently being updated. So being able to kind of work together on this and work so collaboratively is going to be massive. But also, it's just that the way that the system now works, you know, the, the engine itself, it feels honestly like perhaps one of the biggest leaps um, that we've seen. Not, again, just in terms of the visual fidelity that's possible, but just in terms of how, uh, just in terms of how developers can work with this. I'm not a game developer, but I have to say that I'm very excited and just kind of speaking to some friends and just kind of getting a sense of how people's perceptions are with this, I think that it's going to be extremely exciting. I also feel that it's important to talk about the minimum specs of Unreal Engine 5 because people are making like-for-like -like comparisons of being like, well, you know, uh, they're suggesting 32 gigabytes as a minimum and 64 would be great and talking about, you know, the 12 cores uh, processor and stuff like that and then trying to compare that of like, how does that compare to, let's say, an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5? And I'm so I want to say that you can't really do these comparisons because let's say a PS5 only has 16 gigabytes of RAM, but you remember that in this case, you're not actually playing the game on your PC. Instead, you're actually using the engine itself to craft the assets to actually create the world. And, you know, speaking to, again to a couple of developers who kind of gave me uh, a gist of how this works from their perspective anyway. I mean, first of all, UE4, from an ideal development environment, you don't want to have, like, kind of the minimum specifications which Epic are listing on their website anymore. You know, you can read a couple of forum threads yourself or just Google, you know, best UE4 development environment, and they're going to suggest that you have, like, 32 gigabytes of RAM. And again, that is for UE4, which was running on the previous generation consoles, like, let's say, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. And obviously they had nowhere near the amount of RAM. They don't have the super fast SSDs of the modern generation. And yeah, even back in the day when uh, Unreal Engine 4 kind of released. So obviously UE4 now has advanced considerably from its original state because they've continued to iterate with new features as the release, you know, kind of evolves. So from my understanding, there are many reasons that the requirements are a lot are higher. Uh, one great example of this is that you're not getting any data compression that you would see in a final iterative you know, release of a, of a game. So for example, there's a lot of 32-bit floating points which are being used, which will most likely be compressed. You have a huge database of assets which are probably not going to be required when we, again, you ship the game. So you could have, for example, even certain assets which are being loaded into RAM and again, you know, you probably won't ever see them because it was a development environment when they come into the console itself. Now, this is not to say that I don't think that UE5 games are going to have higher requirements for the PC. I've long said that it's going to be very interesting to see how the PC as a platform changes. Uh, we're kind of seeing Microsoft hint about this already with stuff like sampler feedback and the, you know, just the importance of that technology. And, you know, UE5 is not, although it's available to developers, it's not going to have games which ship now. Although it's quite easy to port your code from UE4 to 5, the reality is that um, Fortnite is going to be kind of a test case, but most developers are not really going to jump on this until at least a couple of years 
you know, into the future, you're going to be really seeing games ship in like 2024, I'd guess. And this technology is really going to be pushing the next generation consoles because really and truly it's designed around next generation hardware, including, of course, what the PC is capable of. And there's a really big discussion, of course, of what this is going to mean for PC specs going forward. Personally, I feel that... Um, I think NVMe drives are going to become... I wouldn't say 100% necessary for all AAA games, but I would say that if you don't have a um, NVMe drive, you're really going to struggle with high quality textures and stuff uh, with AAA games in a couple of years' time, simply because of, again, tech like sampler feedback. And obviously, what we're seeing here with um, Epic's technology, for, if, for example, Nanites and Lumen and whatever else, it's, it's, it's very hard to deny that the requirements are going to be so much higher. I also did a quick load up of UE5 on a system and just in the opening scene of Valley of the Ancients, I was hitting around 10 gigabytes of RAM usage, as you can see, with a 16 core 5950X, which was being pegged to around 20 to 25% used. Again, I do want to stress that this is just the opening scene. I wasn't running around the level or doing anything complicated. I wasn't really doing any editing. So this is just me opening up the editor just so you can kind of get an idea. So yeah, basically when you just first load up the scene, as I mentioned a moment ago, you have only around 10 gigabytes of RAM being used by the engine. However, the moment you click the play button, I'm recording this, by the way, at a slightly later date because uh, I've been messing around a little bit more with the engine. You can see that the memory requirements, CPU requirements and so on just absolutely skyrocket as you're now kind of interacting with the scene itself. Obviously, um, you know, even NVIDIA have kind of pushed tech like uh, RTX IO, which basically means decompressing data, which is being pulled from the SSD um, onto the GPU. And of course, Microsoft have kind of gone over this as well. And I, I, I recently covered this. So basically, assets, generally speaking, which are larger, typically have the destination of the GPU. So basically, with Microsoft's newer technology, what we're going to see is that the uh, GPU itself will have compressed data being sent to it, and then that data is then decompressed on the GPU itself, rather than the CPU handling all of the decompression. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how all of this works. But I'm gonna be doing a deeper breakdown on specific areas of this technology um, as we kind of progress through the weeks, but uh, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, then of course you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video because it's YouTube land and click the subscribe button and the belly button. I don't know why I said it like that, but whatever, I'm rolling with it. Because again, YouTube land. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.